Um, and I, I produced a conference that's in its 11th year this year that hosts thousands, so I totally get all the concerns. You have one advantage in that all your performers and speakers are on the boat the whole week. They're captive, yeah. right? So. Uh, Maybe don't use the word yeah, captive. Is <laughs> strong. So I appreciate the, the heterogeneity the of the performers, the entertainers. I <coughs> wish there had it had been brought in earlier into the event, and that the office hours and panels had more. This is a really gender diverse crowd, which I was frankly mm -hmm. a little surprised by. I wish some of it had been brought in earlier. I don't know if any office hours were given by a woman or someone who wasn't. Um, a straight white man, like, uh, and I appreciated the diversity of the entertainers a lot, and, and a lot of the guys shouted out to Gamergate and women in tech issues, which I also totally appreciated, but there are lots of women who could talk about that too. Sure. Amen. So that would be my, and if you bring it in earlier, those of us who are news, sure. see on the main stage, see ourselves and see identification and Absolutely. go, and it doesn't wait till the end of day three to say, oh, look. Yeah. That's um, that is that is something we work uh, towards every year. It's uh, uh, we encourage office hours among our performers and the people who've been on the cruise before get it better and are, tend to be more proactive towards making it. And as it happens this year, most of our returning people have been white males. Uh, but we never try and sort of force it onto the performers because we know that within the because they're not familiar with. The population, which is a unique population, uh, we want them to get that level of comfort so they understand, okay, I see where I can fit and I can totally do this over here. Uh, so we never, that's why we don't schedule them ahead of time for the most part, uh, because we want, we don't want to pressure the performers into feeling like they have to uh, do this thing which we feel should be a bit more organic. So we understand absolutely what you're talking about and it would be great for them to work it, uh, work it in a little earlier, but for example, if we said to Ted Leo, yeah, we need you to read from the Silmarillion at midnight on the first night, uh, it'd be a whole different uh, thing for him, uh, in, just in that one example. But that said, we absolutely understand what you're talking about, and it's something we continue to encourage, and as we get uh, an increased base of performers, uh, it should hopefully and be more returning female performers. Female performers. And, and more returning yeah, female and, and, and gender diverse performers for them to feel more comfortable to approach these issues earlier. And I, I agree with you absolutely. You know, I, I we we you know, it's frankly it's frankly a struggle to work past our own uh, white maleness <laughs> and uh, and the circle of people around us and, and all that stuff and the sort of systemic uh, problem in the comedy industry and the music industry and, uh, so it's a it's a thing that we think about a lot. We try to we try to get better and better. Uh, I think we have not done it right yet, uh, and I, I hope that that uh, we will continue to improve and, and, and work at uh, uh, having a having as diverse uh, a collection of, of voices uh, available and visible in, in in all ways. And that said, uh, just because she happened to mention it last night, I, we don't have a specific time yet, but Ria is going to be having some office hours either today or tomorrow. And we'll get that announcement out on the Twitter. Uh, it's great to see her finally sort of settling in. Yeah. Well, this thing, it, 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 like it takes, it's, it takes it takes some performers a few days, and then they're like, oh, oh, I see what this is. I could do this, you know. I mean, Jim Boja had that awakening last year, uh, and then returned this year, and like somehow knows all of the buttons that he needs to push <laughs> to make people stand up and cheer. And it's it's really great. It's really great. And it does happen every year where. Uh, like the first year, it was just a thing that Hodgman did. I'm going to be in a hot tub, and it was like on one of the last days, and it's always been a cram at the end. And we have been trying to, like Paul was saying, we don't want to pressure anybody, but it's just a natural thing that finally everybody is comfortable with family, and you got your slippers on and feel comfortable to do it. So there'll probably be about 50 office hours in the last two days, uh, which will be frustrating for everybody because you can't do them all. And. Um, we definitely, I, I also hear you, we definitely tried to have a more diverse lineup, but our, our first few shows were maybe a little bit, didn't reflect that diversity quite as much. And, and that, I think, is a very, I think that is a is actually a very good point. It's a great and something note. that we didn't really notice. It, it just, it, that, that's just sort of how, how, how it happened this year. So I we don't, we don't see that. race or gender. <laughs> <laughs> Let us explain to you. <laughs> Actually, it's about ethics and cruise programs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if you understand.
understand how this works, but, uh, <laughs> Uh, well, we are here now in Labadee, and, uh... Beautiful Labadee. <laughs> what? Beautiful, Beautiful Labadee. Not next year, Labadee. <laughs> so thank you all for showing up. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here, and thank you for your... Let's go to the beach. <laughs>